All right, we're going to do the shaky cam here. Uh, all right, so we've got it apart here on the, we're working on the uh, pinion shaft. And here's fourth gear, third gear, second gear. We measured the uh, space between the synchro hub and the, uh, that's the, the, where the, it slows it down. This acts like the brake to slow it down so that your side gears can engage. Now we're coming over here to the top. I want you to look down inside here with me. You can see that this is a, uh, a bearing surface. It's nice and shiny. And you can see the spring. You can see the detents uh, that are in place right there. And uh, the whole thing lifts up nice and easy but I gotta have two hands and I want to uh, I want to put a little thing so I'm just gonna set you back in the stand and I'm gonna take this uh, synchro ring and I'm gonna fold it right back so it's exactly the same position that it was because that baby look looks sweet it looks sweet There it is. Moving back and forth. Nice. And we're going to try to to lift this off as a unit. Alright, now we're going to come over and we're just going to set it down on the paper towel exactly the way it is right there. And now we're going to do the same thing for our clearancing. We're going to check this one. Now. Oh, nice. You push down on that brass synchro ring. And that's what we want. And with second gear being in that good a condition. And I, I just kind of expect. Oh, yes, baby. Yep. We don't. Uh, this was probably good. This was probably good. Let's see. 30 and 28 is going to be what? 58? 58. Let's see what that looks like. 58 is too much. 58 is too much. That's alright. We're in spec. We're in spec. Uh, 40. <laughs> I'm, I'm mathematically handicapped. How much is uh, 26 and 28? We've got uh, 40, 54, 50, hey, 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 nice, nice. Okay, that's what you do. Just drag it around in there. If it's not less than 25, you're in spec. When you start getting it less than 25, you're not given time for the braking action to take care. And it, it that's where you get your crunching in the gear because it hasn't stopped it and it's actually starting to engage and uh, let me take you off the stand here and what we're looking at or what I'm looking at what we're both looking at here we're gonna come down real close see these uh, see these sharp tips this is nice this looks like a good tranny see all these nice it's not all rounded off it's not all polished it looks nice the angles look nice here on the side the point looks real good the uh it's all that's looking good this is looking good and 412 is lower than what i got my dream of the 437 has uh at this point kind of been flushed for now but uh this is this is looking good this is looking real good so we're just going to come straight up and off that goes down on the paper towel here are we as wide as we can? All right, now here is going to be a washer, spacer. Should be. Usually it is. Ah. I wonder if it's stuck on the bottom of the gear. Stack. 
Come on. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. I know it's it's out of your view, but it was the piece. If this washer goes right down here, okay, like so, and it it's stuck to the slider hub. And that's fine. I'm gonna put it right back there underneath, and that is nice and smooth. I'm gonna clean up this grungy wrench. This is a uh, a wrench that we use to tighten this down, and I have to put it in the vise. So, uh, and then that gets torqued down. Okay. We've disassembled our pinion shaft. This is the the pinion bearing. This is uh, probably the, the main bearing of the whole transmission. It should not turn that easy. You shouldn't be able to spin it. You shouldn't have this thing. I can't feel any play back and forth, so that's good. So what I've done is taken my special tool. This was a purchase tool, and it has the slot for uh, torque wrench and this is my old needle style torque wrench so I just am going to start torquing this thing down and try to watch the scale okay it started to it started to tighten at 50 pounds and I gotta have yep yeah, I gotta have a lot more than that I feel the whole thing turning in the vise. I was afraid that was going to happen. Oh, I try to tighten. It's trying to pull up out of the vise. Alright. It's moving. But it's tightening too. Okay. I think that's good. It's still pretty free. It's supposed to be preload on it. Ah, by golly. It also said in the book that you're supposed to put some, uh, the gear oil, not some magic stuff, no synthetic stuff. Use your standard gear oil in there when you do this torque test. The same, boy, that does. That feels good. I wonder with this light oil. <laughs> uh, I've got to. Uh, sorry, I'm not organized. Haven't done this in a long time. And that's pretty freaking obvious. I'm getting to the point where it's embarrassing. But at any rate, I'm I'm gonna get beyond all that personal stuff. This is the way you do it. This is how uh, the, the tools that you need to get it done. And again, this is not, we're not building a race transmission here. We're trying to help somebody who is, uh, is trying to uh, revive their existing transmission, the things to look out for, and the things you got to check. If you're going to do a disassembly uh, and you have problems, these are all the things that you're going to check along the way. And uh, I'm going to uh, bring the book over here so I can read some of this information to you so you can get the specs. And uh, I think for right now, I'm going to uh, have to uh, have myself a cup of coffee. And uh, boy, this spring and pinion looks great. And. Uh, once again, sorry about the shakes. Take you off here. This is a bearing surface in here. Look how nice that looks. Look at it, just like a mirror in there. That is sweet. So that's what, uh, that's the bearing for that one. Let's look inside. This is, uh, this is a second gear bearing. Now, you know, we were talking early on about how there's no filter and, you know, what to look for. You, we saw that other transmission, which I suspect was a good one. I'm seeing some little lines in here. I don't know if that's just a reflection. Yeah. <laughs> Hell, it doesn't look as good as this one. 
I don't know. But it doesn't look bad. It's not galled, put it that way. Put it that way. It's not galled. It's still very usable. Now, one of the racing tricks is to hand pack these needle bearings. You do away with that nylon, uh, I don't know where you'd get them anymore. But that was one of the old racing tricks is to uh, hand pack that thing. And the other thing they would do is underneath this clutch hub, that is a bearing surface right there, and you would drill three holes like between each one of these detents. Here's a detent, here's a detent. And right, you know, just eyeball it. You didn't have to measure it out or be too exact. You would drill a hole in there, and that would allow the... Uh, lubricant to get in there because you're going to build a tighter transmission. This is where that that shim is and you would use probably a a little thicker shim in here to tighten it up and uh, that was one of the racing setups that uh, they talked about it in the blue book and I did that on my sand tranny but I'm not messing with that on this one. I want to get this thing done today, back together. Okay, moving right along on this pinion shaft. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, take some of this nice Lucas synthetic oil. I love this stuff. This is so, such slippery stuff. I'm going to put some, slather some right there on that first gear bearing. I'm going to let some go right down here into the pinion bearing. We're just going to slobber that up. Now I'm going to uh, wipe off. I didn't notice this earlier, darn it. Now it's where you have to start, well, all along, depending on what you're doing. When you're working on transmission, it's just like a engine. Uh, you need to be clean. You need to uh, keep the dirt out of things. There's no filter. Oh, I love that word Germany when I see that on here. Woohoo! We've uh, slathered some of our uh, some good assembly lube on there. We're already we've already measured our uh, synchro hub. Our this is our slider hub. Got another, oopsie, did I have that, gotta be careful, gotta watch it. Okay, that is the, wow, that's so polished, I hardly, hardly caught it. Here's our, that's that bearing nut, and uh, it is punched, so it's not turning any farther. put it back together just the way it was. We only got like a, oh, a very little uh, tightness on that uh, pinion bearing. Now I'm going to take our next gear. There we go. That's better. like that. Doesn't look right. If it doesn't look right. Take it apart. Figure out why. Detents. Popping out. Alright. I guess I should show this. Alright, what happened when I'm trying to uh, set that back in there? 
got ahead of myself and dislodged my detents. And sorry about this, shaky cam. All right, the detents are popping out. That prevented from setting setting down in there. I shouldn't have done that. So uh, I have to straighten that out. And uh, not sure exactly how I'm going to do that just yet. I'm going to get the book, take a look at a picture, and I highly recommend you have a, a Bentley book or something that gives good detail on that besides my video. I caught myself here. I started to uh, take this thing apart without turning on the, the uh, recorder there. And uh, hey, this is Easy Jeezy here. You're out in the garage. We're working on our uh, uh, transmission project. And uh, I, I thought of a couple things here that uh, uh, I, I need to go over. Uh, and I hope this doesn't mess up the order. I, I videoed a lot this morning and uh, I kind of blew right by this thing and I, I thought, uh, you know, I, I want to find out for my own thing, my own uh, benefit as well as uh, teaching and showing you guys because uh, I'm always learning and over the years uh, Volkswagen made some changes and they did some some things uh, different and I want to look at these detents because uh, Darren uh, dropped a little gold nugget in one of his transmission videos and and I want to touch on that too I, I have made a huge effort to not look at other people's transmission building uh, videos because I don't want their things to influence my way of presenting things. Uh, not that they're doing anything wrong or doing uh, anything they shouldn't be doing. Uh, I, I'm just, uh, uh, I want to be genuine here and I want to be sincere and, and uh, I do have my own experiences and it's stupid not to uh, to learn from other people. Uh, but I don't want, in this scenario, I don't want to be accused of being a copycat. And I don't want to be accused of stealing somebody else's uh, uh, knowledge or technique or something like that. And I'm sure there's better ways of doing all this stuff, especially if you could afford the right tools and knew where to get them. But uh, I, I'm just going to show you what has been successful for me. And I consider myself to be just an ordinary, uh, struggling type person. And I want to look at these detents and... Uh, this is one time I want to make an exception all that. So I told you about this uh, this little wire spring and a good friend of mine told me that all he did for his jumping transmission was take this wire, this spring steel, and he just stretched it a little bit. Just that's all he did. He put it back together and it no longer jumped out of gear. So uh, uh, since, since this is going to be more specific to be in plain stock rather than race, and you know these are the kind of problems that a lot is real common so let's we just did that and I wanted to show you and I wanted to see for myself and but we don't know the history we don't know anything about this transmission whether it was a jumper or not but I don't think it can hurt and you take something that's 40 years old just to spring like that as easy as that kind of moved right there uh, you know it's my experience that when stuff gets old it just it doesn't uh, it's not going to like valve springs and stuff they don't last forever so I'm going to now there's a spring on that side this one dug in on that corner I'm gonna lay it right there the same way we're gonna lift we're gonna lift this up kinda on the learning curve myself right here now guys okay so I'm gonna set this they say don't rotate this don't turn it don't get it mixed up Leave it together the way it was and the way it had been worn in. Now this one, the heel or the edge of that spring, I want to make sure that you guys are getting all this. There's a little, there's a little offset there. That has got to ride, be caught inside the detent and you don't want it to be caught in the same place on the other side. So these are big square ones and I guess I guess what we're going to do, I'm going to relax that. <laughs> Probably sorry I did that. And I'm going to stretch this one. I'm going to set this down here. I, for future reference, 
want to look at this detent because I've got a few extras here and I know I heard Darren say that the third and fourth were different than the first and second and I, I've seen solid ones and I've seen hollow ones okay now this one see this is an older one that one's hollowed out it looks kinda like a, a stamping the way that thing looks to me the end of it there the way it's folded this looks like it's billet this is out of that rusty transmission but I want to compare it side by side okay so we know that that's the right length let me see if I can spot one okay, we know that's the size because we're gonna have to take apart uh, gosh I'm gonna have to edit this hang on I got a I got a box of uh, goodies here. I didn't want to clutter up the bench with it. But uh, I had some detents. Okay. All right. All right. Now here's another hollowed out detent, but it doesn't look stamped and folded over like that other one did. I want to see what the difference is here because this is what's critical into keeping this stuff in gear okay the edge because that sits down inside here just on that one tooth there we talked about this in an earlier video I suppose if that wears down it's going to affect the way it's a uh, holds its position this looks the the one in this one looks like to be it's a little sharper but it is it is hollowed out and let's uh here's uh here's one about the same size but it's solid it doesn't it doesn't have that uh this is out of an older transmission or possibly third and fourth now i can see i can see some marks in there some wear marks but this is critical it talks about and all these appear to be the same length I don't see any difference in length I just see the difference the way that it's it's made okay so I've got that that one rusty one here okay it's up there all all of them the same same size lengthwise I'm not so sure about that hump in the back if that is unique to a certain year slider, a certain year detent. Drop the, the slider hub into position that way. Now I'm going to take this one, put it back where I got it. If it'll go. Okay, it did go. I couldn't remember if you could do it that way or not. Okay, so we're going to put, let you look at the back of my head. We're going to put all three of the detents back where they belong. It's really windy outside. Okay, we're going to put this one on this side. We're going to keep it together. And put this spring down here. I'm going to get it to capture that. I'm going to get them all three. Find their happy spot. Okay. Alright. It's a little little tricky, but it's not that bad. You'll do fine. Okay, I'm gonna turn. Okay, this one is in that one. As long as they're not the same ones. It's not that cold out, but the heater just kicked on. Sorry about that. Alright. Now we're going to take this. Well, I'm glad I had the camera on. Okay, that pushes in on that one. 
all three of them are on the same height. I'm thinking that it's got to be pushed to the bottom so that the other synchro, okay, this is going to go like that. So this means that this one has to flip over like this. We already measured them. You can see, uh, I don't know if you can see that, there's little grooves inside this synchro ring, the brass ring. Those will wear down. They hold oil, it's part of the braking system, and uh, it does have a little bit of play so that it can get on the appropriate tooth. And that was another thing I wanted to make a little bit of a, of a comment on. We just looked, I think we did, I'm getting my videos mixed up here. We looked at the teeth here on first gear, and they look pretty good. There's a, there's, there's no, there, there's going to be wear because it's used. Okay. Get the teeth lined up. Get the little square. Both sides. All right, okay. Third gear. Okay, now, when we were measuring that, we were pushing down here, and we had 15 thousandths. I forgot to look in the book, but I know that's uh, too loose. Now, uh, they come in different sizes, different thicknesses. This one is about 63. And I had a replacement that is about 77. And just sitting here like this, I get it to go in. That is so cool. That is just fantastic. And I am going to slide that down, put it in position. Do we have to look like an amateur every step of the way? So, if you want to make sure it's in the groove, try to turn it. It's not turning. <laughs> and it feels tight. Too tight. Doggone it. Let's uh, go to the minimum, which I think was four. I can't get the four. Now, on the uh, blue books, it talks about if you're building a race transmission, the tighter the better. And I wanted to eventually make some comments about the tightness. I don't know if anybody caught it, but... Uh, Old Darren was talking about running. See, I gotta. I'm not pressing down. I need to put this in my press. I need to push on the gear stack, and then I need to measure that with a feeler gauge. I don't know if it's worth bothering you with the setup on that or not. I'm just gonna do it right, right here. It's not that hard. You know, you want. If you have, well, we'll go through that subject later. All right. Now, I don't think that's long enough. <laughs> this is the stuff that takes up time and that bores people to tears. But this is uh, this is why things take time. There's. Uh, you want to do it right, you can, I could have put it together loose, I mean it was running that way, right? But, uh, we stretched our springs a little bit, and I'm just going to get it on the side of the gear, I'm not going to... Just putting, I'm not putting no 12 tons of pressure on it, 
I'm just trying to take all the slop out of it. And then I want to feel... Okay. I can get a three under it. Now, what if you get it too tight? What's going to happen? Now, I thought I could get a three underneath. It looked like it was going at that particular spot. Now I'm not so sure. And the other thing you want to do is make sure that your gears can turn. So, now listen. Can you hear that over there? There's a little, a little side play in that one. And I got a little side play in this one. And that is the job of this snap ring. And I'm trying to figure out to myself why is that uh, we put that spacer in on top of the nut, didn't we? That stayed there. We wouldn't have got it together if it hadn't been there. So based on uh, based on that, I'm feeling pretty good. Just not real, real happy with that. I'm going to double check the book and uh, what I might do, since there is such a big difference, I don't have a, I don't have a snap ring in between those two sizes. I'm not sure what the graduations are. I am going to take that snap ring back off and I'm going to get some memory cloth and I'm just going to rub it back and forth and uh, make sure I got all the burrs and uh, it's hard it's not like you're going to be just grinding that thing down but wherever possible you want to do things the best that you can the best you know how and see how that it goes in and out of the groove so nice, it's, it's like, I can't believe, I just can't believe I, I don't have a little more clearance there. See, it starts to go under, and then it stops. I don't want it that tight. Uh... I don't think it's a good idea, but I don't want it as loose as it was either. See, that's where that old racing, that sand rail stuff, I, I did it by the, the blue books, and uh, that's why you drill those three holes in that hub, because if you're going to build it tight, you need to make sure that you got lubricant in there, and then on the faces of those, you want to make some oil grooves to suck oil in there. and. Uh, I don't want to do all that. I'll probably rub that back and forth on a uh, on a file. But you don't need to watch me struggle with that. You're probably falling asleep anyhow. I'm going to pull that off and I'm going to slide it back and forth on a mill file and then uh, see what we got. I'll turn you back on. I won't hide nothing from you. Easy jeezy. Out.